Well, hi, and welcome to Jim's Radio Shop. And we're going to continue, I think, our fourth video on the restoration of this radio, which is a little bit confusing about just what it is. It says Marconi on this card, but apparently, according to the information I received, this is actually built by Canadian General Electric. Interesting, there's something written right there. Looks like uh, SGO or something like that. Anyway, I think the chassis is supposedly the CGE chassis. Actually, this was also provided to me the Model G40, 1938 39. And it seems to match. So, in my last video, I installed this capacitor in order to reduce the power supply hum. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you've watched all the videos, you've noticed me turn this volume control a lot. And really, I'm not too happy with the volume control's performance. Even mechanically, it's very sticky and stiff. And volume-wise, it seemed to have two settings, which is low and high. It makes funny sounds like that click you just heard, too. So, just at the end of the last video, I was taking a close look at this, and I noticed, curiously enough, a pop-off. This, this wire right here has popped off of here. But, uh, you know, this doesn't make a lot of sense. <clears throat> when I find things like these, I always ask myself, well, how the heck did that happen? We're going to get a little better look at it. First of all, I'm finding it with this wire bent quite a ways away from the connection. Okay, it just didn't go there on its own. And how do I know there wasn't a component between here and here that's missing? Um, I'm sure that from time to time people literally get halfway through a repair and leave something out. I don't know, it's very strange. It's very hard to, to explain. Or something was jammed into the radio. Wacko! And banged this off of here. That yeah, doesn't even make good sense. It, it, I can see just a touch of copper right on the end of this wire. And that almost looks like some kind of brittle failure. Which also doesn't make much sense. I mean, none of it makes much sense. Now, to the circuit. There then. Welcome to Jim's Radio Shop where continuing with this uh, Canadian General Electric radio with the words Marconi written on the front. And we're investigating the volume control on this radio, which does not appear to work properly. And the way it's wired into the circuit doesn't match the circuit diagram. So what I'm doing currently is I'm figuring out of the three terminals on the uh, potentiometer for the volume control, which one's the slider? And I'm connected, my ohmmeter is connected to the two outside terminals. And as I turn it, you can see a change in there, a little jumpy. Turn it right down. So that's a little surprising. It's the two outside pins. Now we got to try to figure out which one's the slider. So let's let's put it on. Hey, what's going on there? Quickly, it's really hooked on. Okay, we'll put this on one end in the middle. Oh, it's reading open circuit. Oh. Okay, 
So with the control at the extreme end, we get a reading of about one megaohm. Turn it a little bit, and that becomes, uh, I'd say it just goes open circuit. Yeah. Okay, let's go on the middle and the other end. exactly the same readings. Hum, 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 hum. Boy, I really don't know what to make with that. Let's, let's take this guy right out of the circuit and study it a little more carefully. First, we'll unsolder this. some rubber there. Sorry if I'm getting my head in front of the camera. And there we go. I will pull this guy right out. Oops. Interfered with. Okay, a little bit of brutality there, and out it comes. Made in USA. There's a patent number on it. It's pretty nice looking. I don't see any values. That's a little odd, isn't it? No values on it. It can be taken completely apart by opening it up here. Bend these little tangs back, but I'm not going to jump into that. First, we're going to repeat some of the tests we were doing. So, let me give you a... Okay. So, we'll... we'll Clip our ohm meter on the outside ones. And a little jumpy here.
very jumpy. Jumpy, jumpy. Now normally I wouldn't expect turning the control to do anything with the wires connected this way. It shouldn't make any difference. seems to. Okay, now if I put it in here, I would expect this to be zero on one end. There, it's gone off scale. It should be zero on this end, and it's off scale. And we get pretty much exactly the same behavior. We're going to have to open this thing up and see what's going on inside it. because its behavior is quite odd. So, we'll have to lift, lift these little tabs here and the whole thing will come apart. And there's a chance it's not going back together. It's always the case with it taking this kind of risk. So let's see if we can pry these up. first one to do this. Okay, last one. very carefully. What the heck is that? Well, I've never looked inside one like this before. Very interesting construction. You know, one of the challenges in making something like this is making the connection to the moving part. There's the moving part. Oh, it's a funny thing going on in there. So, how do you connect one of these pins the moving part. By, by the way, it's it's made just the way all of these kinds of things are made. The two outside connections are on the resistive element, and supposed to work. I 
think I got it. That's... Who would ever have imagined something like that? So I think the way this is working is, you see this piece of metal here, which is sprung upwards off of the resistive element. And this slider is not actually making electrical contact. It looks like it has a little brush or something like that there. And it's pushing down this sprung metal piece onto the resistive element. And that's where the contact's occurring. So the point of contact moves as you turn this. Kind of a clever solution. Now, this connector, I guess, is supposed to connect to this piece. And it looks like the connection is this little metal band here, which doesn't look to me to be in the right place at all. It looks to me like it should be up and over here. Hmm, pretty solid. There it goes. Maybe, oops, you gotta imagine it's supposed to be right in here. And this sprung metal part is not supposed to move. I'm sure it's supposed to stay right where it is. So exactly why it's moving, I'm not sure. Put that right in the middle there. The whole metal piece is turning. I've driven this over a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, these parts can't be taken, this can't be taken apart. So this little piece here was shorting against there, and that might have been giving us these weird readings. Let's, let's try again, because we need to know the value of this. I'm going to put a different one in. I need to know what the value should be. I can't read it on this schematic. So I think, you know, we're looking at major unreliability here. going all over the map. And it could be, you know, there's some riveted riveted pieces here. Maybe, maybe these are no good. These connections. The meter got a little bored there and turned off. So what I'm doing is I'm just flexing these pieces. See, this one doesn't, I think it's too good. Well, that's quite the, uh, quite the complicated piece. Let's take a reading right on the element here, if we can get onto it. steady. I don't know what to say about that. jumping everywhere. Hmm. I may have to 
Let's see if I can get another copy of this schematic, the one that's readable. Because this one isn't readable. Let me try again. No, it cannot be read. So, so our decision is to try to fix this. It doesn't look like a good idea. Replace it with a more modern version of this, of the same value. That's probably what we need to do. And the criticality of the value here may not be that great. So there's another resistor in series with it. arrangement. I don't even see how it can work at all. The way it's wired in the circuit. But okay, I think I gotta get a better. Uh, excuse me, I gotta get a better circuit diagram. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be on the next video if I'm lucky enough to find one and uh, see if I can't replace this. Hi and welcome to Jim's Radio Shop. I think this might be video number, mm -hmm, number 8 and I'm in the process of installing a, a new volume control in this radio. This is a Canadian General Electric G40, the old volume control quite an interesting device but it didn't work so we're putting in a modern one whose value is very close it's the insulation just cracking off here so I really don't want to do too much with these wires I'm, gonna, I'm putting the wires back just where they were on the original one, on the assumption that that's the right place. And we'll uh, discover what I did with the solder. Here it is. Solder that guy up here. Not liking the solder very much. I'm not so sure that took. So the wire it must be coated with something. Not on purpose either. Probably an oxide or something. Yuck. So for those situations, I have some flux here, which normally don't use in this kind of situation, but at all. Okay. Let 
This may or may not help. Let's see. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. There must be some rubber in the insulation there. I can see it bubbling from the heat. And that rubber is probably, yeah, that's good. Okay. Let's make a little clearance here. Okay, we'll do the back lug now. It's going to be a little harder to get at in a moment. That didn't work. Now it did actually solder it on there, but I don't like it. That's good. And now the ground wire. You know, very often with these old things, old radios and electronics, the problems in them are less electrical and more mechanical. Or maybe another way of putting that is the, the root of most electrical, appearing to be electrical problems or electronic problems. The root of the problem is often a mechanical thing. Tack that on there. Volume down. Ooh, that feels nice. Volume down. Let's give this radio a go. Okay, a little safety activity here, which is putting away what we can in terms of parts and tools. So we don't have a whole pile of uh, distracting stuff laying around. Okay, wires, good, everything's good. Okay, we're ready to start this guy up. And there he goes. Yeah, there's no light bulb on this. It's the radio. Okay. Still need to turn it up quite high. Well, that could be because of other. That could be because of other problems. Lack of antenna.
that's working. That's working pretty good. Nice and smooth operation. Okay, that's great. The next step on this radio will be a tune-up. I think at this point, I think we've solved.